All right, two more letters to answer here from a viewer um, on casting out devils and church buildings. <laughs> uh, should be interesting. <clears throat> okay, dear Brian, uh, please explain 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12, and 1 Corinthians 14, verses 34 through 35. When the Bible speaks about church in multiple verses, what church is it speaking about? I know it doesn't uh, speak about a church building, but I just need more of an understanding on this. Okay, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. We'll go there first. Um, where it talks about a woman is not to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12 says... But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. All right, what is that talking about? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians 14. Um, verses 34 through 35. It says something here, and this will further define it, this passage. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 Verse 34 and 35. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if any, and if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Uh, oh, wow, there's a church building, and they, they aren't allowed to talk in there. No. What it's talking about there, notice it says in, in verse 34, churches, and then it says the church down there in verse 35. What's going on? Churches is a reference to different assemblies of believers coming together and all meeting corporately in public, all right? Or in if there's a building that's big enough to house them or whatever else. But the New Testament way is you meet in small groups, you know, that the government can't control. What a concept, you know? Should have learned your lesson there during the uh, scamdemic. We won't get into that, but... Uh, um, if churches, if, if people, Christians were doing things the biblical way, there'd have been no problems, right? Churches are supposed to meet in small groups. And so you have the church at Ephesus, the church at Thyatira, the church at Philippi or whatever, Corinth, you know, the different churches there. And, you know, you're thinking, oh, they're, you know, 50,000 members or something. No, they're small churches. They're small groups of believers. And people will come and go, you know, if you know anything about Christians, there's always fake ones coming along. And they'll, you know, the fake ones will come and then they leave a little while later and whatever. And you'll have a pretty, you know, usually a small group of people that you're with. Um, even the best church buildings out there, the, you know, best <laughs> church buildings out there, they go through the revolving door thing. A lot of people come and go, all right? That's just the way that it is. But those churches, the small assemblies, when they come together and they meet corporately, what you're supposed to have there is you're supposed to have the elders of the different church groups coming together and the men are there and they're supposed to be speaking and teaching and saying, okay, um, there's this pride parade or something coming to the area here. What should we do about this? And elder so-and-so over here of the church of, you know, Los Angeles says, um, well, what we're going to try to do is uh, we're going to try to come out with just tracks and just hand out tracks. We're not holding up signs to get anybody ticked off or whatever. And the church of lower Los Angeles uh, comes and he says, I think that's a good idea. We were planning something similar, but we do have a few signs just saying, that, you know, verses of scripture or something like that. Uh, what do you think, brother, the church of uh, whatever other area out there? Um, and he says, well, you know, we've actually contacted the, the city officials and we've been talking to them and things and saying that this is against our religious beliefs and can we go out there and talk to these people? And, you know, the different elders are supposed to be speaking. And it's at that point in time that the wife, wives and things, the women are supposed to be silent. That does not mean that women cannot witness for Jesus Christ, that women cannot teach other people the word of God. It doesn't mean that. What it's saying is corporate worship coming together the women are to be silent at that point in time. Let the elders, the male elders, you read down in 1 Timothy chapter uh, 3, and it talks about, you know, if a man desire the office of a bishop, there's no female, you know, hierarchy within the church. Uh, again, spiritual hierarchy is Jesus Christ, 
man, woman, children. That's the way it's supposed to be. It's how God set it up. If you don't like that, well, then go join some feministic witchcraft cult um, to people out there. I'm not saying to the writer of the letter here. Uh, but that's the way that it is. So women absolutely can teach um, other women, certainly. Uh, if a lost man comes along, you know, there's a, the one time where, um, let's go there real quick, uh, Apollos, in the book of Acts, let me see where, I, where that verse is at here, I'm trying to think. Um, but you have uh, Aquila and Priscilla. Um, they come along and they're, they're talking to Apollos. And um, I did not write any notes at all for this video here, so if you just give me a minute, I can look for this. Um, but, you know, there's, it's perfectly fine for women to come along and say, okay, um, there's a guy or something, if a woman's at home or something and the, the male delivery guy comes or whatever and he says, he starts to talk and, he, and, you know, you can tell he's kind of getting under conviction and I just don't know what to believe and, and whatever. Um, and the woman is there by herself and it's not, there's any kind of danger or whatever of any kind of relationship there. Um, and she says to the male guy or whatever, well, you know, Jesus Christ died for your sins and I can show you from the Bible and whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Um, Acts chapter 18, verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took on him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. So it wasn't, you know, Aquila says, uh, Priscilla, <clears throat> go sit down over there. I'll take care of this, you know. No, he said they took him unto them and they're both there talking to him about the way of the Lord. So she can talk in that context. She can witness to a lost man. She can speak to a man like that. Give a word of encouragement to a brother in the Lord. Absolutely fine. What is being condemned in 1 Corinthians uh, 14, 1 Timothy chapter 2, what's being condemned is when the churches are meeting together corporately and saying, let's come together, let the male elders, elders do the speaking. And the women at that point in time can work as you know, secretaries essentially for their husband and they can be writing down questions and, you know, writing down things like this. I mean, I can't tell you how many times my wife's notes have helped me to remember things that I forgot. Um, women can be extremely good at that. Um, back to the letter here. Uh, back to the verses I am curious about. Are women never allowed to teach uh, over about ever about the Bible and all it says? I'm struggling with these verses in the KJV because I'm a woman and I want to talk about the Bible and help people understand things. I'm still learning though. I don't want to teach people wrongly. Also, I strongly I'm, I'm struggling with feeling saved. I pray and ask for forgiveness. I speak and out loud and ask Jesus to save me. I got baptized in a church building. Is that if I don't go to church or if there weren't church wrong buildings, how would people get baptized? Well, people got baptized without church buildings, you know, out in rivers and lakes and things. Not a problem. I read the Bible often and try to understand things. I'm sorry. My questions and words are all over the place. This is how my brain thinks. That's fine. <laughs> I get a little bit that way myself. Um, let me just answer the question there. Uh, and that is the thing of um, you know, struggling with feeling if you're saved or not. Did I really get saved and whatever? Um, well, you know, there's an old hymn, you know, prone, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. You know, Christians always will have that struggle. You'll think about that. Did I really get saved? You know, that will be there. But you know, as the Lord, as you grow in the Lord, you're going to learn to trust his word and you'll learn to trust the, you know, the leading of the Holy Spirit and things. Um, the Lord will show you. He'll show you proof that you are saved. He'll do things 
uh, for you. Um, I'm scared I am devil-possessed because I haven't had a huge realization yet. I've asked to be saved and repented of my sins, past, present, and future. Um, I am trying. Please pray for me. Um, certainly. And um, I wanted to add this. I went to a Baptist church and I liked how the church was KJV only. Um, one day I asked them about Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 through 23. They told me, the pastor and assistant pastor, this book of Matthew was only to the Jews. Um, chapter of Matthew would be the better way to say it. I didn't know what to say, but now I'm thinking, uh, well, you mean uh, as well say that all the books in the Bible apply to only the people of that time, so the book doesn't apply to me. That was my thought. Please share your opinion. Um, the Sermon on the Mount, you know, I wasn't there. I don't know exactly what they said, so I can't respond perfectly to that. They might have been heretical or whatever, but the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5 through 7, is for the Jews in the time of Jake, or in the uh, Millennial Kingdom. It's, that's an important thing that you have to under, understand there. Uh, you compare the doctrines of that with what goes on in the Pauline epistles and things. You compare Scripture with Scripture. Again, I've talked about this many times. Um, <clears throat> in 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul says about, If any man can send not the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, he is proud, knowing nothing. But they're about questions and strikes of words. And it goes on. Um, yes, we are supposed to compare what Paul wrote, you know, uh, Romans, the whole way through to um, Titus, well, Philemon. And you go through that whole thing and you compare what Paul's writing to what Jesus Christ is saying. There's instruction in righteousness there. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in the Sermon on the Mount. But doctrinally, it's before Jesus died on the cross. Doctrinally, Jesus is speaking to the Jews at the time. That doesn't mean the whole book of Matthew is for Jews and Jews only. There are things in there after the death, burial, and resurrection, certainly, that would you could apply to us as well. So compare Scripture with Scripture. That's what you have to do. Um, another letter here from the same um, woman here. Hello, Brian. Um, gives the name. I have a question about a few things. I watched your video about exorcism. And I was curious what you would, or what would you do if somebody came to you and asked you to help them because their ch child or children were possessed? I've done a lot of research on these things. I don't like Catholicism because of their wrong beliefs. I follow the King James Bible only. I'm asking because I want to know how to be able to help somebody if they are possessed by a devil. I have read and watched interviews of people speaking about how their children were possessed and doing unexplainable things and have having no recollection of what they have said or done. Okay, so what do you do about somebody that's possessed with devils? Have I run into people that are possessed with devils? Absolutely, yes. Um, I was in Honduras the one time years ago. I heard this woman screaming, and I said, "Oh, you know, does she need help? Should we go help her?" And they said, "Yeah, she's into she's a, a witch, or something like this." And they said that she had this, she was you know with child, and she they said that they went and they looked at it, and. The child, the ba the bump went over here, and then it moved over this way, and then it disappeared. And they said it's some really weird stuff that this woman's into. Um, that was one. Another time, I was had a neighbor who was a drunken Roman Catholic, and he was just plastered on. I could barely speak, and he's you know laughing, and just like that, he stopped and he and he looks at me and he goes, "I know who you are." This real weird low voice comes out of his, him, and he says, "You're a man of God," and he just spoke perfectly clear. Whereas just a few, you know, a minute or two earlier, he's, oh, damn it, how's he doing? And he couldn't even speak correctly. So did I cast the devil out of him? No, I didn't. Um, I couldn't get a word in edgewise. The guy just kept on talking. And I just said, well, you know, um, Tom, you need to get some help. Uh, Tom, the Lord can save you and things. You know, I don't know. And he went back to the other thing then. And I thought, You're, you know, this guy's in no shape for me to, cast a devil out and whatever else he's drunk um and so uh what would i do if somebody came and they said that their child is possessed with devils well i would have to ask them a lot of questions first and foremost what kind of how do you think this thing would have happened do you have occult stuff in your home are you practicing witchcraft type of things yourself um 
you know, and again, a lot of the devil possession type of stuff that you see in the Gospels, it's before Jesus dies on the cross. So you're dealing with Old Testament type of stuff. Now there are people that are possessed with, possessed with devils after Jesus dies on the cross. But then you have the guy there in the book of Acts and um, he, you know, these Jewish exorcists come and they're trying to get him, get the devils cast out of this guy. And what does the guy say? The devils in speaking through the guy, he says, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? You or ye, I, I guess it is. And um, so the devils, they know who Jesus is. They know who Paul is. And if you're born again, they know who you are. They do. And so, again, I've been around people. I went to this Renaissance Fair the one time in Pennsylvania. I didn't know it was, you know, it was October and they were doing this, you know, really weird occult thing. I mean, it was just witchcraft everywhere. And uh, I saw a couple of people that were, you know, probably possessed. And it was just like I, I walked in there, some, you know, 20-foot tall monster or something. I mean, they were they were literally, they were going like this and they looked over and they're, you know, and looking down and, this I remember this one older woman. She was hiding behind this this you know stake in like in a tent or something. This post going up, and she's hiding behind it, you know, peeking around at me, just just trembling, you know. And so they know who a Christian is, and so you know I would simply say to somebody, they come and they say, my child's possessed with devils. Oh, okay, you know I can go and see what's going on there, or give them some advice, or whatever else, you know, play some old hymns, read the King James Bible to your child, um, talk to them about salvation. If there's occult stuff in their life, get it out of their life, you know, take away their TVs, take away their smartphones and things, keep them away from the internet. I mean, there's a bunch of things that you could do. And if, you know, are these people saved? If you're not saved, I can't really help your child. You know, so it's, it's not some kind of a thing of this charismatic stuff of, of, uh, you know, the devil comes in and I command you and all this, you know, that stuff's a show. All right. <laughs> I've known charismatics and they're some of the most messed up people out there. Really terribly messed up. And, uh, I'll take power over the spirits. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You would know because you have spirits in you besides the Holy Spirit. Or, or, I'm not the Holy Spirit. I'm saying, um, again, go to the scriptures. Where are their instructions? Here's how you cast out devils in the Pauline epistles. It's not there. Okay. Now, did Paul do it? Yes, he did. The young woman possessed with the spirit of divination. Paul turns around and says, you know, come out of her. And uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, that's why it's so important to say the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't try to change Jesus' name to Yeshua, Yahashua, Yahawashi, and all this other stuff. If you speak English, say Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, that's his powerful title there. Um, and the devils will flee. The devils will run away. So, but uh, hopefully that answers the questions there. And uh, I'm going to get on to answering some more letters. Thank you for watching.